Now at long last, we've come to Hithpael. Let's check it out. What is Hithpael? Well, this stem intensifies action with reflexive voice. So it's not active, it's not passive. I guess you could say it's somewhere in the middle where the action is done upon oneself. But it's like the PL in that it intensifies whatever the action might be. If it's not reflexive, it's reciprocal. If it's not reciprocal, it's iterative time and time again. And sometimes Hithpael is just simply simple action, just like Cal. Now Hithpael is easy to recognize because just as the spelling of the name suggests, you will see Hey, Hirik, Tav, Hith. And don't forget the dogesh forte in the second root consonant. Consistent, just like PL. So let's compare Cal with Hithpael in the perfect. Katal, Hithkatel, Katla, Hithkatla, Katalta, Hithkatalta, Katalt, Hithkatalt, Katalti, Hithkatalti. Katlu, Hith Katlu, Kataltem, Hith Kataltem, Kataltem, Hith Kataltem, Katalnu, Hith Katalnu. So it's very, very, very close between the Cal and the Hith pile, but the major difference is the Hey Hirik Tav at the beginning in the prefix. In the imperfect, the Hey is replaced with the imperfect prefix, but you will still see Hirik Tav preceding the verbal root. And don't forget the Dagesh Forte in the second root consonant. Consistent, just like PL, note the difference in the Cal Imperfect versus the hith pile imperfect. Yiktol, Yithkatel, Tiktol, Tithkatel, Tiktol, Tithkatel, Tiktali, Tithkatli, Ektol. Eth Katel Yiktalu Yith Katlu Tiktolna Tith Katelna Tiktalu Tith Katlu Tiktolna Tith Katelna Niktol Nithkatel. Now look at the imperative. The imperative follows suit with the second masculine singular imperfect, except in place of the tav imperfect prefix, we get the hey prefix, which matches everything else that we've seen prior to. And don't forget the dogesh forte in the second root consonant. Consistent, just like PL. So compare the cal with the hithpile. Katol, Hithkatel, Kitli, Hithkatli, Kitlu, Hithkatlu, Katolna, Hithkatelna. The infinitive construct and infinitive absolute matches the second masculine singular imperative, Hithpile, Hithkatel. In the participle with the mem, we get myth in the beginning. And don't forget the dogesh forte in the second root consonant. Consistent, just like PL, compare it with Cal. 
Cotail. Myth Cotail. Coteleth. Myth Coteleth. Cotleem. Myth Cotleem. Cotloth. Myth Cotloth. Now, while Hithpael is easy to recognize, there are instances where it's a little troubling. And that's because of something called metathesis. What this is, is one of the consonants can transpose, meaning move in the word to make it easier to pronounce. Let me show you an example. Sathar. This is to hide. So, cal perfect third masculine singular, he hid. Instead of hithsathar, we end up with histhathar. The initial tav transposes to after the first root consonant. This is supposedly to make it easier to pronounce. However, we end up with a double tav anyways. So give or take, I don't understand why, but it happens. So you need to be able to recognize it. Or look at sakar. This is to hire. Hithpael, instead of hithsacher, it becomes histhacher. So this metathesis can occur with any of the following letters. Samic, Sin, Sheen, or Tsade. So any sibilant, which means S sound consonants. And when this happens, the two consonants will switch places with the Tav. So metathesis is the transposition of two side-by-side -side or contiguous consonants between a Tav and a sibilant. Samic, Sin, Sheen, Tsade. There's also Tav assimilation. When the first consonant of a verbal root is Zion, Dalit, Tet, or Tav, then the Tav of the Hithpael preformative prefix will assimilate into the first consonant of the verbal root and remain as a Dagesh forte. So look at Davar, Hidaver. The Hithpael, Dagesh, is in the Beit. But then we see a dogesh in the Dalit. That is from the Tav assimilation. You can also tell there's been some assimilation in the fact that we have a path act there in place of a Shava. Or we'll look at Tame to be unclean. Hitame. Same thing. We see the dogesh in the Mem. That's because of Hithpael. But we also see a dogesh in the Tet. And that is from the Tav assimilation. Plus, we see the Pathak instead of Shava. What about weak verbs? Well, they're straightforward. No changes in the perfect, in the imperfect, in the imperative, in the infinitives, or in the participles. When it comes to geminates, there's really no diagnostic changes when it comes to third hey. Just note, you're, you're going to see in third hey a dogesh in the first root consonant, but that's not part of the diagnostics for Hithpael. In second gutturals, we're still going to see our prefix, and we're not going to see a dogesh in the second root consonant. And so we will see a lengthening pathak in our, uh, under our first root consonant, but it's unmistakable you're dealing with Hithpael because you see the prefix. If it's not virtual doubling, then you're going to see compensatory lengthening. So instead of a pathak, you're going to get a comet under the first root consonant, but you will still see your prefix. Now there's also the Hithpolel, another one of those stems, kind of like the Polel versus the PL. And the Hithpolel is basically the Hithpael, but specifically for biconsonantals and some geminate. But again, you're going to see the hith marker. The only difference is you're going to see maybe a holum vav. That's it. And lastly, there is one other stem, the hishtafel. Now, this one's pretty rare by comparison, so we're not going to spend a whole lot of time on it, but it's good to be aware of. This is what it looks like. Well, that's it for today. We have now covered all of our grammar basics. Next week, we're going to dive into an introduction to the BHS, 
Biblia Hebraica Stuttgartensia, which is the academic version of the Hebrew Bible. We'll see you next week.